Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing the content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so... Another tobacco company is discontinuing their cigarettes. I'm very disappointed. Especially because this is a tobacco company that I really enjoy. I gotta be honest, I really enjoy the cigarettes from this tobacco company, and that just makes it all the more disappointing as to why they're pulling out of the US market and discontinuing their cigarettes kind of thing. Today, I'm gonna be talking about what company is discontinuing their cigarettes, why they're discontinuing their cigarettes in the USA, and my opinion as to the entire subject of the video kind of thing. I think without further ado though, I'm gonna go and introduce you guys to the cigarette I'm gonna be smoking today. I'm gonna be smoking a little bit of a Now Red 100, you know what I'm saying? So I think without further ado, it is time for me to go ahead and get one of these cigarettes out, not four of them, just one, you know what I'm saying? And then it's gonna be time for me to go ahead and get this all lit up, you know what I'm saying? And go ahead and start talking a little bit about the subject of this video, why another cigarette company is pulling out of the US market and discontinuing their cigarettes, you know what I'm saying? I think without further ado though, let's go ahead and get this Now Red 100 all lit up and let's go ahead and well, start talking a little bit about the subject of this video. Yes sir, yes sir, you know what I'm saying? So, what tobacco company is discontinuing their cigarettes and leaving the US market? Because they're not discontinuing all of their cigarettes, they're just discontinuing their cigarettes in the US market, of course. Well, it's a company that's been here since 1999, KT&G. Korean Tobacco and Ginseng Corporation, ranked as the, the fifth largest tobacco corporation in the United States, you know what I'm saying. They're pulling out of the U.S. market. They are discontinuing all of their U.S. cigarette lines. This was announced in December of 2021, so I am a little bit late to the news, I will be honest, y'all. But it's still very, very, very much a shame. I gotta be honest, y'all. It's still very, very much a shame. They announced in December 2021, I said, that they would be suspending their USA operations for the foreseeable future. Now, they are gonna be continuing, of course, in Korea, where they're from, kind of thing. They're, lar they're, they're, they're the largest tobacco company in Korea, and they're gonna continue producing cigarettes there, but they are indeed pulling out of the US cigarette market, which really is a shame. Now, as said, they announced this in December. What were the reasons that KT&G cited as to why they're leaving the US market? Well, there are four reasons that I am citing. There's only three reasons that they are citing, though. The first of the reasons that they are citing are intensifying regulations. KT&G pretty much said that the FDA is planning on introducing a new nicotine cap and stuff like that kind of thing. That was one of the main reasons that they said for why they were pulling out of U.S. markets and everything like that. Increased regulations, the FDA possibly putting a new nicotine cap on, which could edge out their best-selling cigarette, the This Red. I got to be honest with you, the FDA is planning on putting a cap on nicotine and stuff like that, that would edge out full flavored cigarettes. Of course, that would be a huge hit to KTNG. Another part of this, I'm sure, is probably the new pack warnings with the disgusting cigarette pictures and everything, with the disgusting graphic pictures and everything like that that are gonna be required to be put on cigarette packs in the next couple years and everything like that kind of thing. I am sure that that is part of it as well. I personally can't see the second part that I mentioned, the graphic pictures though, being as big of a part though, I gotta play on so simply because I really can't see it being over a million dollars for transferring over all of the designs, changing the designs on the machinery, hiring some graphic designer to change the designs just a little bit to include that photo and everything like that kind of thing. I really cannot see that being all that big of a deal, but maybe they do, I gotta play on sale. Maybe they do, and maybe they're seeing it to be a huge deal, I gotta play on sale. But the whole nicotine cap thing that definitely seems like a much bigger deal to me as a cigarette consumer, simply because their best-selling cigarette is this is is the this red. I'm still struggling to say, you know what I'm saying? Their best-selling cigarette is the this red, which is a full-flavored cigarette. And if the new nicotine cap edges out full-flavored cigarettes, well, they're gonna be out their best seller, I gotta be honest. So that is a huge deal, you know what I'm saying? The second reason that they are citing though is in is increased competition. I gotta be honest, increased competition. Which to me at least, KT and G, I'm sorry, y'all, that's kind of a lame reason. I'm sorry, y'all, no offense, that's kind of a lame reason. The budget cigarette market, which is the main market that KTNG was focused on in the United States at least, has and is, has always been and is still a highly competitive market kind of thing. LM, Hall Mall, Lucky Strike, Chesterfield, there are so many different brands that are budget cigarettes, Maverick, Crown, just to name another two kind of thing, that are budget cigarettes. It is just about the most competitive market 
four cigarettes in the United States, at least, to get a Bulanisio. So saying that there's growing comp competition and everything like that, really the only new competition to the budget cigarette market is Lucky Strike, which is really just a Newport Red and Newport like lights and stuff like that kind of thing. I got a Bulliana seal. That's really all it is kind of thing. So I can't really see how they're citing that as increased competition. And to me, at least, that just seems a little bit more like an excuse. I got a Bulliana seal. However, the third reason does not seem like an excuse at all. In fact, it seems very reasonable. And I would definitely have to say this third reason is probably the most reasonable reason they cited. I got a Bulliana seal. But I think without further ado, before I say that reason, I'm going to go ahead and take another hit of my cigarette. Definitely be needing some nicotine, you know what I'm saying? So the third reason is because the U.S. government mandates all tobacco companies to have escrow accounts for slush funds for tobacco-related lawsuits, and most tobacco companies are all in a conglomerate, so if one of them gets sued, it's pretty much a fact that all of them get sued kind of thing. So basically, it just means that one tobacco company is not going to be put out of business by one bad lawsuit. They all share the penalty kind of thing, and that's basically just how it works with tobacco and everything like that kind of thing, with tobacco lawsuits in the United States. I would assume, though, that's not how it works in Korea. And I would suppose, kind of thing, every single tobacco company probably has a slush fund from anywhere from $20 million to $100 million, if not more than that. i got to be honest, I'm not sure on the actual numbers, but I would not expect it to be any lower than $20 million. So, I would definitely have to say, that is probably the main reason as to why they're pulling out, kind of thing. Having a slush fund just sitting with $100 million of cash in it is a terrible thing for your business. It's just about one of the worst things a tobacco company can do, any company can do for their business, in fact, kind of thing. Having money that is just sitting around not being used is just wasting money kind of thing. Inflation, um, the time value of money kind of thing. The time value of money is such a significant concept with all of this kind of thing. If you've got $100 million sitting around in a slush fund not being used, just waiting to be used for a tobacco lawsuit, and it can't be put anywhere else because you never know, you might need it kind of thing. That money is not only losing value because of inflation, but is also, is also not being used to help the company make more money. It's all about the time value of money. All the, the longer that money sits in that slush fund, the less money it's making for KT&G. And having $100 million in that, KT&G, according to the article I read by the Korean Herald, which I will be linking in the description down below, you know what I'm saying? Go check that out if you guys want any further reading or anything like that kind of thing. $100 million just sitting in a slush fund when their yearly earnings are only something like $170 million. That's over 50% of their yearly earnings sitting in a slush fund for lawsuits that may never happen. That's huge, I gotta put on myself. That is huge. They are losing so much money on that, and I can totally see why they would want to pull out of the U.S. market simply due to the slush fund. It's one of the simple reasons that I could never create a tobacco company myself, not only because of the FDA regulations and everything like that kind of thing, but simply because I don't have $20 million to use as a slush fund kind of thing. I don't. It's a simple fact kind of thing. There's a reason as to why there are not a lot of small tobacco companies out there anymore, and that is the slush fund reason, the escrow account reason for the tobacco lawsuits is one of the biggest reasons as to why. However, as said, there are three reasons that they listed. That, those are the three reasons they listed. There's one more reason, a fourth reason though, that they did not list that I heard from my from 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 the person that I buy cigarette cigarettes from kind of thing who runs a cigarette distribution company and everything like that kind of thing. So he's pretty up there on cigarette knowledge and everything like that. And he's spoken to some KTNG representatives before and everything like that kind of thing. And oh my goodness, it is just getting windy and rainy and everything like that. So I do apologize if you guys are hearing any wind noise or anything like that. My sincerest apologies, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in a pretty good spot away from the wind noise, you know what I'm saying? But who knows, the wind just be whipping around, I gotta play honest y'all. But let's go ahead and take another hit, hit, and then let's go ahead and talk about the fourth reason, you know what I'm saying? Now, the fourth reason that he cited for them pulling out of the US market was simply that they were undercutting almost their entire sales workforce for like the last year or two kind of thing. They have been undercutting their sales force for like the last year or two by a significant portion. And I mean a significant portion kind of thing. They were undercutting them by a lot, apparently. And that is a huge deal kind of thing. That is a huge deal. If a company undercuts their employees, not only do they lose, not only do the employees lose trust in their company, but they also 
are more likely to, well, leave the company and not sell or do a worse job selling cigarettes if they don't feel like they're being compensated fairly for their work kind of thing. That's just how it works kind of thing. This is why employers want to pay their employees a competitive salary because otherwise their employers are gonna leave kind of thing or their employees are gonna leave kind of thing. And apparently they had been undercutting their employees for a while, I got a plan to sell, for a while. And that's definitely a good reason as to why they might leave the US market. If they saw it as an unrecoverable, significant expense kind of thing where, wow, we're gonna have to start paying our employees 50% to 100% more money to get them to actually want to work for us kind of thing. That is a huge amount of money kind of thing, an amount of money that due to the escrow account, they might not have kind of thing. They might not have that money to pay their employees anymore, even if they were already undercutting their employees kind of thing. That is a huge factor kind of thing and definitely something that is not something to be ignored, that is for sure. And I'm very, very glad that I asked the guy that I buy cigarettes from kind of thing, his opinion, because that's definitely a very, very significant factor, you know what I'm saying? But from what I've heard, KTNG has already laid off pretty much all of their US employees and everything like that kind of thing. And it really is a shame kind of thing. It really is a shame. And according to the Korean Herald, as said, Yearly, they will be losing about $170 million in revenue, which really is a lot of money, but in all honesty, it might just be better worth their time to not be in the US market kind of thing, simply because $170 million, it might just not be all worth that. But it is still 3.9% of their international sales, which is quite a lot. 3.9% might not sound like a lot, but when you hear it's 170 million, that is a lot, I gotta be honest with you. So certainly not something, not a number to be ignored, that is for sure. And here comes that wind. Oh my goodness, you know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, it is just picking up. But I think I have one or two more hits of this cigarette left. I have not talked about my opinion on this subject yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the cigarette and then I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my opinion on this subject. But I just cannot believe this wind today. It is just doing me dirty, you know what I'm saying? Really is my worst enemy, you know what I'm saying? But. Let's go ahead and speak a little bit about, I'm gonna go ahead and speak a little bit about my opinion on this subject. Now, my opinion on KT&G pulling out of the US market, I think a lot of the reasons are pretty reasonable. As said, if they're undercutting their employees kind of thing and they simply can't afford them to pay, they simply can't afford to pay them any more kind of thing, which who knows if that's true or not, but if that's kind of what the deal is kind of thing, then it's fully understandable. If they can't afford to pay their employees, then they shouldn't be in the US market kind of thing intensifying regulations, that's a perfectly reasonable explanation kind of thing. If it's gonna to cost too much, if it's gonna eat into their profits too much to make it unprofitable to be in the US in the market because they lose some of their cigarettes that are their most sold kind of thing, that's a pretty decent reason. I gotta be completely honest with you, although the whole, if they are, if, if part of the reason kind of thing is because of the, is because of the, uh, is, is because of the warning labels on cigarettes and stuff like that, some of the graphic warning labels, that is a little bit silly. I gotta be honest with you, I said, I can't see it being more than a million dollars to revamp their lines and everything like that. I gotta be honest with you, in my personal opinion, at least, the growing competition factor, it's all BS. I really cannot see that being a significant factor or anything like that. As said, the budget cigarette category kind of thing has always been a super competitive cigarette category, I gotta be honest with you, and definitely something that they knew that was competitive when they came in, and it always has been and always will be a very, very competitive category. In my personal opinion, though, the escrow accounts, that the slush funds kind of thing with $100 million in them, that's probably the most significant amount because if you have $100 million just sitting in a, it's just sitting in an account kind of thing, that's basically just wasted money right there. The company is basically just out $100 million and that really does suck. It's it's one of those things that, if, especially if it's mandated, you're just, you, it, you just cannot help it kind of thing. And that is certainly a super, super reasonable reason as to why they might've pulled out of the US market because a mandated $100 million escrow account kind of thing for lawsuits is definitely one of those things that that can kill a company and I would not be surprised if it killed KT&G in the USA. And another thing, as said, the fourth reason that I gave as well, not, not paying your employees enough is definitely reasonable enough to pull out of the US market. If you're not paying your employees enough, if you're losing sales because you're not paying your employees enough, that's a huge factor as well. But what do I think is going to happen to KT&G now? And I do want to say one thing real quick. I have gone ahead when I spoke to the man I buy cigarettes from and everything like that. I went ahead and purchased one of each variety of the KTNG cigarettes that were sold at his place kind of thing. I went ahead and purchased one of each variety that were still sold. Some of them were already sold out, I gotta be honest with you. But I did go ahead and purchase one of each variety that I could get my hands on. So I will be having some more discontinued cigarette reviews coming up very, very soon, you know what I'm saying? But what is my opinion? What will happen to KTNG in the US now? Well, of course, their cigarettes are now discontinued. They're gonna disappear from the US market unless they make a comeback. 
which they did only say they're going to be discontinuing for the foreseeable future, there is the possibility of them coming back. I don't think it's very likely. I think maybe it's a 5% chance of them coming back. I got to be honest. I really cannot see them coming back to the U.S. market. And I think it's very, very unlikely that they do. I got to be honest. What I think is a far more likely chance that it will happen is that I think KTNG will sell their USA nameplates to a USA tobacco company like ITG, RG Reynolds, or Philip Morris USA kind of thing. I think they're going to they're gonna sell the this red secret formula or something like that kind of thing or the name and the nameplates and everything like that kind of thing all of the secret formulas all of the nameplates and everything like that kind of thing i think they're, they're going to sell that all of those to a usa tobacco company so i do think that those brands may continue on in the next couple years when that sale goes through kind of thing if it does go through i personally think there's a 25 to 40 percent chance of that happening i gotta be honest i can't not see kt and g not wanting to get as much money out of the u.s market as possible and selling nameplates, selling secret formulas is completely legal kind of thing. Obviously, when Lori Lard went out of business in like 2012 kind of thing, they sold Newport to R to RJ Reynolds and everything like that kind of thing. And RJ Reynolds sold a bunch of brands to ITG, which was previously Lori Lard, I gotta be honest, y'all. So it's definitely one of those things. I can definitely see maybe Philip Morris, RJ Reynolds, and ITG maybe getting one brand each or something like that, each getting their own secret formula and everything like that kind of thing, and continuing the sales of those brands. I'm not really sure if that's gonna happen. As said, I think there's maybe a 40% chance that happened, but I would fully assume that KT and G is gonna to wanna to try to get as much money as possible out of the US market kind of thing. They, I cannot remember, it, I wanna say that the cigarettes were made in Korea. So I wanna say that there were no manufacturing uh, or anything that there was no manufacturing in the USA or anything like that. However, their headquarters and everything like that kind of thing, they're definitely gonna to wanna to make some money back and everything like that. I can definitely see them wanting to make some money back and everything like that kind of thing. So I can definitely see them selling the nameplates if in the future they're not looking at coming back into the US market and everything like that. And as I said, I think there's about a 25 to 40% chance of that possibly happening, you know what I'm saying? But overall, it really is a shame that KT and G is pulling out of the US market. And once again, that wind is just picking up. Oh my goodness. It is just coming in. I do apologize about any wind noise or anything like that. Just trying to cover up my microphone just a little bit. My sincerest apologies about the wind noise coming in and everything like that kind of thing. It is just so windy, so rainy today. Oh my goodness. It's just getting loud. Oh my goodness. What is going on today? It is just storming. But it really is overall a shame, a huge shame that KTNG is pulling out of the US market. I really, really personally enjoyed the this red. It was definitely one of my favorite budget cigarettes, if not my favorite budget cigarette behind the LM Turkish blend. I gotta be honest, y'all. And it's definitely one of those things that I will genuinely miss them. I will genuinely, genuinely miss them. And it's one of those things that I really do hope that they sell the nameplates and the secret formula to some USA tobacco company because I would love to see those brands make a reappearance, maybe under a different manufacturer, but of the same secret formula kind of thing and maybe of comparable quality kind of thing. I'd take it, I gotta play honestly. I certainly would take it. It really is a shame though, I gotta play honestly. It really is a shame though. Another tobacco company pulling out of the USA. It's a shame. I really will miss seeing this cigarettes on the shelf, timeless time cigarettes on the shelf. I've never seen a carnival cigarette, never reviewed a carnival cigarette. Hopefully I'll be able to find some sometime, I gotta be honest, y'all. But I've never seen them in person, and it, it really is one of those things that, it really is a massive shame. It really is a massive shame that kt &G is pulling out of the US market. I will certainly miss them, even if they were undercutting their employees kind of thing, even if they weren't the best company to their employees kind of thing. I certainly will still miss their products, that is for sure. And... It really is one of those things that really just is a massive shame. I gotta believe it. It really is just a massive shame. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about my opinion on KT and G pulling out of the U.S. market. As said, it really is a shame. I really will miss the this red uh, and and all of the brands and everything like that kind of thing. And I totally see why they're pulling out of the U.S. market. I think a lot of the reasons are very reasonable, except for the increased com competitiveness. I think that's just a very BS reason in my personal opinion. But Hey, if anybody from KTNG wants to do an interview and let me know actually why they pulled out of the U.S. market, I am 100% down for that, you know what I'm saying? I am 100% down for that. Hit me up if you used to work at KT, KTNG, you know what I'm saying? Make sure to hit me up, you know what I'm saying? But this is basically just my personal opinion, you know what I'm saying? And as said, I really would like to see if KTNG sells the, the nameplates and everything like that to companies in the future. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this subject, you know what I'm saying? I think I've pretty much covered everything I could think about about this subject, you know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments down below, though, if you guys have any thoughts on kt &G pulling out of the U.S. market. If you guys have any other thoughts on another cigarette company pulling out of the U.S. market and discontinuing their cigarettes kind of thing. As said, it really is a shame. 
But I do think without further ado, it is time for me to go and end the video right here. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching my video on another cigarette company pulling out of the US market and discontinuing the cigarettes and everything like that. And I hope you guys have enjoyed, you know what I'm saying? I know this has been a little bit more of a sad video and everything like that, but I do suppose it is a video to make and it's certainly a video that I am glad I made because this is something that I am very opinionated on and I'm very, very glad to have shared my opinions with y'all and I hope that y'all are very willing to share y'all's opinions with me in the comments down below. And of course, make sure to share y'all's opinions on this subject in the comments down below, you know what I'm saying? But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys did enjoy the video, of course, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, everything in the description. I'll let you know what I'm saying. Go check it all out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, y'all. And to the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. And um, yeah, if y'all have any uh, KTNG cigarettes, make sure, of course, hoard them. Hoard them, you know what I'm saying? Because they ain't coming back, you know what I'm saying? They ain't coming back for the foreseeable future. Of course, as said, though, KTNG is not permanently discontinuing their cigarettes, but for all intents and purposes, they are discontinued, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, thank you very much for watching, y'all. Until the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir, yes, sir, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying?